The Sun Jie Suan Jing, Master Sun's computational canon, the 5th century AD, gives a detailed description of division on a counting board. To understand the process, remember that if A times B equals C, then A equals C divided by B. So when we multiply 36 by 41 to get 1,476, we could also read this as a division, 1,476 divided by 36. So let's consider that problem. Remember, this is actually asking us what times 36 gives 1,476. So we'll set down the dividend of the divisor with the leading digit of the divisor aligned with the leading digit of the dividend, at least for now. Now, let's ignore the dividend for a moment. If we were multiplying a number by 36, the leading digit of the upper factor would be somewhere above the 6, and then multiplied by each digit of the lower factor. Remember, the upper commands the lower. So if there was a leading digit above the 6, it would be multiplied by 3 and subtracted from 1. But we can't do that, so there's actually no digit above the 6. Next, remember that after multiplying the digit of the lower factor by the leading digit of the upper factor, we'd shift the lower factor one place. Since there's no leading digit, there are no multiplications to perform, and we'll shift the lower factor. So now, the leading digit of the upper factor would be multiplied by 3 to get something less than 14. So, it might be 4. We'll multiply the leading digit of the upper factor by the digits of the lower factor. And if this was a multiplication, we'd add. But since this is a division, we'll subtract. And so 4 times 3 is 12, which will subtract from the 14, leaving 2. And then 4 times 6 is 24, which you subtract from 27, leaving 3. Now to multiplication, we'd remove the digit of the upper factor, then shift the lower factor. Since we're doing a division, we'll place the digit of the upper factor then shift the lower factor. And now repeat. The next digit, times 3, must be less than or equal to 3, and we'll guess it's, uh, how about 1? And upper commands the lower. 1 times 3 is 3, which we subtract from the 3, leaving nothing. And then 1 times 6 is 6, which you subtract from the 6, leaving nothing, and a quotient is 41, remainder 0. Now, on an actual counting board, the process is much more efficient because the subtractions are done as they're produced, and we don't have to keep recopying the digits. So we might set up our rod numerals, and shift, and we can just subtract the 3s multiple times until we can't, so we subtract 3 once, twice, 3, 4 times, and again, upper commands the lower. We're going to subtract 6 4 times, and shift, and again, Upper commands the lower, we can subtract 3 once, and we can subtract the 6 once, giving us our quotient. Let's try a larger division. So again, we'll place our numbers. So something times 1 has to be less than 3, and so we guess the first digit is going to be 2. So the upper commands the lower. 2 times 1 is 2, 
which we subtract from 3, leaving 1. 2 times 5 is 10, which we subtract from 15, leaving 5. 2 times 7 is 14, which we subtract from 51, leaving 37. Then shift. We guess the next digit. Again, something times 1 is going to be less than 3, so we guess our next digit is 2. The upper commands the lower. 2 times 1 is 2, which we subtract from 3, leaving 1. 2 times 5 is 10, which we subtract from 17, leaving 7. And 2 times 7 is 14, which we subtract from 75, leaving 61. And shift. And again, we'll guess our next digit. Something times 1 has to be less than 6. Now, on a counting board, if we guess too low, we can fix that by increasing our guess slightly. So it's always best to guess a little low. So we'll guess the next digit is going to be 3. 3 times 1 is 3, which we subtract from 6, leaving 3. 3 times 5 is 15, which we subtract from 31, leaving 16. And 3 times 7 is 21, which we subtract from 168, leaving 147. And this gives our quotient, 23, and our remainder, 147.